So looking at the aspects of ketogenic plants, your carbohydrates are going to be removed. So those starches like potatoes, rice, corn, peas, beans, beets, root vegetables, even fruits often taken out of the plant and we're left with vegetables as a source of carbohydrates. Protein sources. We really want protein sources to be what I call complete. What does that mean? It means it has all the amino acids. All 20 amino acids have to be consumed throughout the day. Especially what we'll call the essential amino acids. When we think of things that are essential, we can't do without them. So essential amino acids are ones that we don't produce through our own biochemical pathways. We have to get them from the outside. So complete proteins are really key. But ultimately, you can't do a ketogenic plan well unless you have fats as your main goal. Okay? Now, fats are broken down into two types, and this is important. Fats can be inflammatory, causing problems with heat, or anti-inflammatory, removing aspects of heat. And really, we want to get aspects of anti-inflammation in our system when we do a ketogenic plan. Now, when we do classic or unregulated ketogenic plans, we can get a lot of inflammatory fats in. And I usually tell people these are fats with legs. So fats that come from animals and fats that come from birds. The anti-inflammatory fats are fats without legs. Those are fish and plants. How much? Well, sadly, the average American diet has about 16 to 1, 16 times the inflammatory fats to one anti-inflammatory fat. So we're trying to switch that around, at least get it down to two to one, and sometimes I try to get it one to two. So that way we can have more anti-inflammatory fats. Now, some of the things we may use once we have those things in order in terms of the macronutrients, again, looking at energy balance, getting our macronutrients in place, 60% fat, 30% protein, and 10% carbohydrate, there's a couple of tricks that we can use to make a ketogenic food plan work better. 